I am currently uploading the latest Meshtastic firmware to this Atlavox beacon behind me completely wirelessly over Bluetooth. So this means that you don't have to go and retrieve your node from a tree or a tower in order to update the firmware. So let's go back to the shop. I'll show you exactly which devices you can do this with, and I'll walk you through step-by-step step how to do it. So I'm gonna give you a quick overview so you know what you're getting yourself into, and then we'll walk through step-by-step step, uh, exactly how to do this. But first of all, let me show you a list of devices that this is compatible with. So I'm just on the flasher.meshtastic.org website. This is how you would typically flash your Meshtastic device if you were connecting it directly to your computer. We're not gonna be using that today. I just wanna show you this device list because it has a nice illustration of all uh, compatible Meshtastic devices. If I filter for NRF52, you might be asking what the heck is an NRF52? That is the actual uh, microcontroller unit that is on the board. So for example, this is a Rack WizBlock. Rack is the name of the company that makes this, but the microcontroller they use on this board is actually made by a company called Nordic. So the Nordic NRF52 um, MCU is a very popular device for Meshtastic uh, radios because it's very power efficient. So we can see uh, this works on the Rack WizBlock 4631. That's the radio we use in the Atlavox Beacon as well as the Atlavox M1 radio. But this will also work on the T114 from Helltech, the T1000E from Seed Studios, as well as all of these other devices here. So the way this works is you'll download the firmware to your phone, then you'll install the NRF firmware update app from Nordic, so it's a Nordic specific app. Then you select the firmware file. I'm gonna tell you exactly how to choose the correct file because when you download firmware, you actually get a zip file with like a ton of different um, firmware versions. There's some settings here that you need to configure that we'll go over. And then you just get within Bluetooth range of your device. You select the device from the list here and you tap upload. Now, just a quick disclaimer, I have tested this a number of different times and I've actually had it fail a few times, um, especially when I first tried it before changing the settings in the Nordic app. So um, there is a possibility that this process fails and what will happen is your device will basically be stuck in DFU mode. Now, DFU mode is a mode where the radio um, basically mounts as a USB device. So it's not functioning, it's not like performing its radio meshtastic functions, it's just mounted as a uh, USB device. And what I found is if it fails, it just kind of stays in DFU mode, even if you power cycle it. So you're kind of forced to take it down and um, connect it to a computer in order to manually transfer the firmware file if that happens to you. So just keep that in mind. Um, this isn't completely fail safe, but if you follow the settings that I've set for the Nordic app, it has run reliably for me. I've tested it several times that way. Now let's walk through step-by-step step how to do this. So initially you're going to need an internet connection to download the firmware and install the app. So let's do that now. And then there will be a point where you can basically go off grid in order to perform the firmware update. So first go to meshtastic.org, tap download. And by the way, this is pretty similar to Android or iPhone. So I'm just going to show you on iPhone. We're going to scroll down to the firmware section. You can choose the stable version, which I recommend, or if you wanna do the alpha version that has some of the more recent updates, kind of bleeding edge updates, you can do that. So I'm gonna select the stable version. Now, I actually have the GitHub app installed on my phone, and if I tap this, it's gonna open the app. So I'm just gonna long press on this and select open in new tab, just so it stays in the browser and uh, we can download it directly in the browser. If you don't have GitHub, you don't have to worry about that. It'll just open it in a new tab automatically. So. GitHub is basically the developer's repository for all of the files um, and development updates and kind of keeping track of all the changes that are made to the firmware and the website and all of that stuff. There's a lot of stuff. It probably seems overwhelming, it just shows a lot of the update notes and stuff like that. We want to keep scrolling down until we get to the uh, section called assets. So these are all of the different firmware um, zip files 
for all the different types of mesh tastic radios. So we want to specifically find the firmware version for the NRF 52840. So we can see it right there. We're going to tap it and it's going to ask if you want to save it to the device. We do. So we'll just put it in our files and that's going to download a zip file to our phone. Now we do need to extract those files. So I'm going to tap open in and open in downloads. So here we can tap it and that will extract all of the files into a folder. Now, if we check this folder real quick, you'll see what I mean here. Um, there are a ton of different files here for all the different types of devices. So I'll show you how to uh, quickly filter this list so you're selecting the correct firmware file because it's not the same one that you use when you're updating firmware over a USB cable. We want the over the air or OTA version. So I'll show you that in a little bit. Next, you want to download and install the NRF device firmware update tool. Again, this is something from Nordic themselves. They're the manufacturer and engineer of the microcontroller unit that Rack uses and all these other companies are using on their uh, circuit boards. Now, don't let the ratings freak you out. I know it's a 3.2 rating. Like I said, when I first tried using this app, it failed like three times. And it wasn't until I changed some settings where I had a successful firmware update. So as long as you have a strong Bluetooth signal and you set the correct settings in the app, I think you'll be fine. So let's go ahead and open this app. And the first thing we want to do is go to the settings. And by default, I think the number of packets is like 20 or something like that. You want to toggle this packets receipt notification. So it enables you to change the number of packets to five. So that's going to take longer to complete the firmware update, but it's just more reliable. I literally could not get it to work reliably when it was set at the default settings. So just change those two settings right there and you should be good. Then we'll go back and we're gonna select the firmware file. So we'll tap select. You'll navigate to the folder where you downloaded and unzipped the uh, firmware assets. So for me, I was in the Chrome browser, so it's in that Chrome folder. I'll tap the folder that we unzipped and just to filter this down, we're going to type in 4631 hyphen. And notice at the end of this file, it says OTA. That's the over the air version of the firmware that we need. You'll also notice that it's a zip file. That is correct. We are actually sending the zip file through the app. That's what we want. We don't want to extract this zip file. So we'll tap this. So that's successful. And by the way, at this point, you don't need to be connected to the internet. So if you are going off grid to uh, be within the vicinity of your node, you can do that at this point. But we'll go to select the device and wait for the device to show up on the Bluetooth list. Then we'll tap our Meshtastic device and tap upload. And now you just have to be patient. So this does take a little bit of time. Just make sure your screen doesn't go dark. Um, otherwise it could fail. So just let it run its course. All right, so we have the DFU initialized and we have a progress bar showing the uploading process. Now, while that's running, I wanna show you the Atlavox beacon. You can purchase it at atlavox.com. This is a solar powered mesh-tastic and mesh core node. So it does work with mesh core as well. Um, there's a number of different ways that you can customize the beacon and we'll customize it immediately prior to shipping it out for you. So this is something that you would set up in a remote location just to reinforce your mesh and it runs 24 seven. It has a five watt uh, solar panel on here and a 5,000 milliamp hour battery. So it's a really rugged device. It's all laser cut aluminum powder coated uh, frame. You can adjust the solar panel uh, separately from the mounting surface. You've got an antenna rail up at the top for a ton of different uh, mounting configurations. So there's all sorts of different ways that you can um, set up your Atlavox beacon. So if you want to check one of those out, you can check out the links below or go to atlavox.com. All right, so that was successful. The node will reboot automatically and you'll be good to go with your new firmware version. Now, again, there is a chance that you get a failure for whatever reason. I've had success by changing that packet setting. 
Um, but worst case scenario, you will have to just retrieve the, the node and connect it to a computer in order to uh, manually flash the firmware. So I hope this video was helpful um, and gives you a chance to flash your firmware over Bluetooth. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.